Uh, hello, and thanks for being here. Um, as you said, I'm a choreographer, but besides that, I'm also an animator, or it's part of my hobby to make animations, and I always involve this in my work. Uh, I think you saw an example before the break. Um, and like many other forms of technology, uh, animation is one of them. I always like to mix uh, my passion or my thing, choreography, with some kind of technology that for me it's very important that I get a, a hands-on feeling with, that I play for a while with, uh, and that I put into my work. Um, I'll show you a very short example of something that I did with uh, two self-built drones, uh, where I recorded parts of uh, one of the islands in the Netherlands. I uh, basically filmed uh, their schelling and later used these recordings to project under the dancers, where the dancers had wheels in their costume, so you could see them kind of float over the, the landscape. I'm sure you have no idea what I'm talking about, so it would be nice to uh, show a little bit. It's a very short uh, uh, clip, but uh, please have a look. So that was a little bit, well, uh, part of it, what you saw was recordings, but also part was animation, like the clouds and the seagulls that came by. Um, and one thing that you get to do with if you're animating is something that's called uh, motion curves. It's basically a curve that describes a certain movement of something. It can be a rotation or a movement in space. And uh, playing with this, I always thought, well, it would be nice if I can control my dancers like this. Um, but just even for uh, something that's called a, like a walking cycle, you need at least, I don't know, 20, 30 curves that describe every little single bit of rotation and movement. So it wouldn't work because I would just give such a mountain of curves to the dancers and I would have coffee the whole day and after a while they would have just figured out one step. So I looked for something that was a bit more manageable. Um, and it was also the thing that I'm not a dancer anymore, I used to be a dancer. Um, and I don't want to just create stuff that feels good and looks good on me. So I wanted to do, develop a system that I could still give the dancers a lot of information about what I wanted, so how I want them to move, uh, without giving them any, everything. So I sort of a way to give them uh, the dynamics of a movement and the, the rhythm of a movement, but to leave the, the shape completely free and up to them. Uh, I would like to ask my assistant Johanna Nilan to help me share this. Um, and I will have to plug this cable. And that's always the thing with technology, you never know if it will work. <coughs> yes, I think we have something. And we want this. <coughs> Very good. So, I developed an app to uh, give information to my dancers. Um, and actually, the most simple way to explain this is to just make the most simple curve I can do. Um, and this curve will, of course, have a few things or a few elements that a dance step also has. It will have a, a shape, it will have a dynamic, uh, and it will have a, a rhythm. Um, uh, and it will have a direction. All things that, that are needed to, for me uh, to, to give her enough information so she knows what to do. Uh, 
so the, the, the most simple form I can, I can show is uh, just a line moving over eight counts in exactly the same way. So I could do... So, uh, so if I can, Johanna, if you could help me with what this very simple curve would be. Could be. This is maybe not the most interesting choreography you've seen in your life. And actually, if she would have done this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it wouldn't have been wrong because I didn't give her more information than it. But uh, maybe this can be a nice starting point to start to build on top of this, so I'll give her a bit more information. loop it a few times for her so she can at least learn the count. You need more time? Yeah, no? Then le let us have a look. Okay. Well. So what she did was she kept doing the, the first eight counts that was this continuing line moving this way and on, on top she built two layers that were the movement that I had no idea what she was going to do. Uh, but I did know kind of in what dynamics she would move. So for me it's a very nice way to yeah, give her enough information and still be surprised what, what comes out. Um, let's try a little more complicated one. Sorry, I have to... Let's, I think, let's do a bit more. <laughs> Usually I have coffee and then I come back and see what comes out. Can we uh, kind of go? Okay. <laughs> yeah? Good. Well, uh, of course, that's a work in progress. To make a whole choreography like this, we would be here for a while, so I'll show you a bit of what can come out of this. I will have to plug this, unplug and unplug this again. There we go. And now you see my nice desktop. Yeah. That's what I hoped for. So uh, I made a whole choreography like this, basically describing all kinds of forces that will pull in in your life like will pull you to many sites. This piece was called Three Rooms and it was completely created on an iPad or some device that uh, I could draw this, uh, I could use this app with. So uh, a little example of this. Uh, thank you, Johanna. <laughs>
well, if you would like to have more information about how to find this online, come and talk to me afterwards. But yeah, so these were all once lines on, a, on, a, on an iPad and we created a whole piece like this. Um, I would like to end this with showing you a little bit of um, some work that I did combining again technology and uh, animation. And I also used uh, this uh, app to create some of the movements and I just think it's a nice way to, to end this. So uh, here it is. Hope it will play, yes it will. Thank you very much and I hope to see you around.